Hello, welcome to our last bulletin for the day. We're broadcasting live from the news hub at Adesawe Kanda. And you can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. I'm Stephen NT. Let's start with the day's news highlights. U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Robert Porter Jackson, has expressed displeasure at what he describes as high level of corruption in the public sector. Speaking with TV3 on the sidelines of the swearing-in ceremony for Peace Corps education volunteers, he revealed five major U.S. companies have withheld their investments in Ghana because of corruption. International relations expert has repeated calls for government to, as a matter of urgency, change the name Flagstaff House to Jubilee House. Dr. Vladimir Entridansu is of the view the Flagstaff House is a colonial relic, adding failure to change it will misrepresent the commemoration of Ghana's 50th anniversary. <music> Relatives and friends of the victim of Tuesday's Alaja shooting have petitioned the Attorney General, the Interior Minister and the Inspector General of Police to ensure justice is not delayed. A brother of the deceased, Daniel Sefa, fears justice may be compromised due to uh, the, his self-acclaimed status. Former Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan, is calling on African leaders to give opportunities to the youth to take up leadership roles instead of holding on to power. Delivering a lecture on leadership and public service, the former world leader said no one is too young to lead. Those were our major news highlights. Remember, we're streaming live on our Facebook page and on 3news.com. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, head of the Center for European Studies at the University of Ghana, Professor Ransford Jampo, has taken on the senior minister, Yao Safo Mafo, over his recent comments of a possible layoff in the public sector. In a publication, Professor Jampo took on the senior minister, indicating he had his children enrolled into the public service immediately after winning an election and makes a U-turn, telling all other unemployed Ghanaians that the public service is bloated and cannot absorb them. He questioned the senior minister's public pronouncements on the po past administration's freeze on public sector employment whilst in opposition. He uh, noted the senior minister may be right by telling Ghanaians about the overbloated nature of the public service and the fact that it may not be able to absorb more people. But he quizzed his professionalism while in opposition. He ordered politicians in Ghana would lie and deceive to get political power. And when power is granted by the people, they would uh, use the same power to inflict hardships on the people. Right, uh, let's uh, quickly get onto the telephone lines and speak to Professor Jampo. He's joining us on the, on the lines now. Uh, good evening, Prof, and thank you very much uh, for joining us. Hello, good evening. Mm. You, you appear disappointed uh, with the comments of the senior minister on the public uh, employment. Uh, can you explain why? Well, not, not only um, with the senior minister, but um, generally about politicians in our part of the world. You know, in mature democracies, parties seeking the votes of the citizens go to the political market with properly thought through ideas that, when implemented, could help solve properly investigated problems. 
Unfortunately, in our part of the world, it seems politicians do not investigate challenges confronting the country properly before making promises. Now, given that um, the challenges are not properly investigated and the only drive um, for the electionary campaign is the quest for power, politicians in opposition criticize ruthlessly almost every initiative of the ruling government aimed at solving a problem and create an impression that the ruling government, uh, um, ruling government is incompetent in solving problems. Now, they get to power only to inflict fame or worse hardship on people. Um, if you remember, Jay Kufo criticized Rawlings for the size of his government. When he was given the mandate to rule, um, he had a bigger government. Um, similarly, MPP um, criticized Muhammad's size of government when they were elected, they had one ten. Now, the issue about public sector recruitment freeze was one major issue that was critiqued um, by, uh, by the MPP in the lead up to the 2016 election. And for instance, if you teach in a public university and um, you have lecturers retiring and all that, you want replacement. And you are told, no, um, there is public sector recruitment freeze. Um, but this was a party that um, the leader um, to the election had made um, quite as some assurance that, well, maybe it, it was because of how incompetent the previous or the then ruling government was. And that's how come they were not able to negotiate things properly um, to lift that um, ban on public sector recruitment. Now, you get to power, and then you rehash that same refrain that the public sector is choked. And but but, but won't you say, Prof, won't you say uh, that uh, Mr. Safa Marvel, for example, was just uh, simply telling the truth? You wouldn't agree? Well, I, in my post that I wrote, yes, I'm sure, um, I, believe, I believe so that the public sector is choked. But the point is, didn't he know when he was in opposition that indeed the public sector was choked? I'm sure he was aware that the public sector was indeed choked. And he's now telling the truth. But my point is, why do you create an impression as if you can fix the problem? Why do you create an impression as if there is no problem and that give me the mandate when I come, I would fix the problem? And then you go and then you rehearse the truth that we are being told when you were in opposition. I think um, it's about time we learned that we cannot continue to go on the tangent of um, politics of deceit. Just tell the people anything to get power. When we get power, we'll tell them the truth. I think it is completely unacceptable. It is shameful, and we should not condone this. Ghanaians should be well um, alert and take note of some of these things. They should be mindful of the fact that politicians will continue to take all of us for right. They will continue to take all of us for granted. So long as we become overly partisan, politicians are aware that even if they are greedy, even if they are self-seeking, even if they are self-serving, even if they are self-perpetuating, even if they are self-aggrandizing, we will continue to support them. And so they will continue to take us for a ride. But let us rise over and above partisan politics to keep politicians on their toes, letting them know that, look, this was what you told us in the lead up to the election, and we expect you to abide by it. You cannot come to power and then all of a sudden begin to tell us the very thing that your your predecessor. So, Prof, how would you how would you uh, how would you have advised him to go about uh, this? Especially considering that Ghana is running an IMF program, uh, we must stick to it. We, we must be lean. And so, if uh, you were advising well, him, how Ghana else is running could he an have IMF said? program, and you know the conditionalities attached to it in opposition. You don't make a big fuss out of it. You don't critique unnecessarily because you know that the then government was implementing an IMF, an IMF program and it was a part of the program and you cannot easily you know, um, get rid of it. And so you shouldn't have raised hopes of people. And I'm very much happy that people who were very much gullible are now becoming discerning that, look, it is important that we all appreciate the fact that it seems that politicians in our part of the world do not mean well for all of us. They are always interested in what will get them into but political is, power. Is, is that Once not, a, is that, Prof, power, is that not a harsh over... Right. Prof, is that not a harsh over generalization that politicians all over the world do not mean well for their, no, I, their I citizens? I didn't say all. I said politicians in our part of in the world. In our part of the world. Because what I'm seeing is that 
when they are in opposition, they are ruthless in their criticisms. They criticize, they suffer what I refer to as opposition disease. Everything being done by the ruling government is wrong. And so the NDC in opposition is doing the same thing. Everything that is done by the ruling government is wrong. Now they get into power and they do the same things that they were criti critiquing when they were in opposition. And I'm saying that this is absolutely unacceptable. We cannot continue to go on right. this tangent as a fledgling democracy, climbing higher the ladder of democratic progression. I don't think it should be our portion. Right. Uh, Professor Jampo, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Professor Ransford Jampo is the head of uh, the Centre for European Studies at the University of Ghana. This is still News at 10, and you can hear us live on your radio, 92.7. We're also streaming on our Facebook page. Uh, we'll take a break here. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, Kenya's Election Commission has dismissed opposition claims that its systems were hacked to produce a, uh, quote, fictitious lead for President Uhuru Kenyatta, unquote. Opposition leader Raila Odinga has claimed unnamed elements within the Electoral Commission told them the results being declared for Uhuru are actually meant for him, Raila Odinga. Well, let's listen to the Kenya opposition leader, Raila Odinga, address the press on these allegations. The electoral fraud and fabrication of results was massive and extensive to the extent that the results of the 47 counties were manipulated. And as I've said, you have uncovered the fraud. Uhuru must go home. The IABC must be fully accountable. The will of the people is unstoppable. And the chief executive of the Kenya Electoral Commission, Ezra Chiloba, says the claims by the opposition cannot be true. Addressing the press, he says the commission has not received any such reports of a system hack and will not engage in any such activity. There were no external or internal interference to the system at any point before, during, and after the voting. So the RTA system is secure. To Fred uh, Wahomi, who is the chairman of the Kenya's Computer Science and Forensics Association, is joining us uh, from Nairobi. Fred, uh, we're grateful that you could join us. We know that it's pretty late in Kenya, but tell us uh, how Kenya is all through this evening till this morning. Um, th th thank you for having me. And. Um Interestingly enough, I'd be an objective uh, as an association. Uh, sometimes we did request uh, IBC to provide us with information on whether the system was assessed, whether there were any security assessment before the election. And uh, they successfully uh, gave us that information that um, uh, assessment was done by very credible firms, including IBM. And uh, at pointing from what was shared yesterday by the former prime minister, we had a look at the documents, <clears throat> the logs that were shared publicly. And uh, there were some few gaps uh, if we were to question that specific document. Because uh, some of the procedure when you had, you had, for instance, if the document was to be admitted in the court uh, as, as, as an electronic evidence, uh, a procedure in the in the, in the forensic uh, process, uh, you are required first to to show how authentic you acquired those the, that that information. If you illegally acquire uh, an electronic evidence in the first place, it already invalidates whatever you are trying to present. Uh, going a bit technical, when we uh, we analyzed the, those specific logs, 
they showed that uh, they came from a uh, Windows machine uh, running some uh, virtual machine called VMware. And also most of the data that was there were some, some failed login attempts to some few accounts there. And also uh, going through the logs, uh, those were mostly uh, backup processes and restoration processes of a database. And then uh, it raises a very serious issue on how they, they, they access to those specific logs. And uh, fortunately, the IBC was able to respond and um, they confirmed actually they were not using Microsoft SQL Server because the logs showed that the, the, the logs were generated from a Microsoft SQL Server database. They have uh, confirmed that they were running an Oracle database, which now inv invalidates everything. Interesting. Uh, so what, 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 what you're telling us about, does that constitute a hack as the opposition is claiming? Uh, well, <clears throat> and that would be subject of a court process. And if that was to be subjected to a court process, the first thing would have uh, the electronic evidence, purported electronic evidence to be admitted in the court of law. And as a process, as I have said, uh, a very critical process is a chain of custody. How did you get that specific evidence in the first place? Uh, is it possible for me using my own laptop to just uh, install uh, my SQL, Microsoft SQL server and I also generate my own logs and I try to create some database, show some backup processes and restoration taking place? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. And I also take the screenshot and share with people and purport this is a hack. Well, a uh, database can be compromised, but according to what IBC have come out to, to assure us as the public and through also the association, uh, they have uh, clearly showed us that they have already some layered uh, architecture in, in terms of security. And for you to actually get to the database, if you have all that technical capability, you'll have to pass through various layers of security to be able to get mm, to that. To get there. And according to our assessment, we don't think that qualifies to be a hack. This is just someone who generated some logs, then uh, just now gave out to the media without even having that technical knowledge at all. Interesting. Uh, so uh, let me ask you uh, my final question. With the kinds of system that the Independent Electoral Commission has, would you say it's easy for these activities you're narrating uh, to... to override the security systems of the commission or let me let me better make it uh, clear do you think the systems are robust enough not to be hacked uh, first if we look at uh, there's a portal that uh, ibc has provided to the public this portal is supposed to, uh, to provide um real time like real time results to the public before they wait for the other forms and uh, the the agency to tally the final results if you look at that specific portal, it, it runs on something called a subdomain. The main domain is ibc.ora.k, but if you check at that portal, it is rts.ibc.ora.k. That portal is not even hosted in Nairobi, it's hosted in Amazon. Mm -hmm. And Amazon is one of the most secure platform and architecture, having used that uh, platform. And uh, for the public uh, portal, where the public are able to get the results, definitely that one I'd give it 100%, or maybe 99% assurance that it cannot be maybe broken into. The other thing is, uh, as I have said, the agency has already uh, completed and uh, confirmed that they have layered right. of security. Uh, farms in security. Right, uh, Fred, we're grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, Fred Wahome uh, joined us from Nairobi. Thank you. Fred is uh, the head of the uh, uh, Forensics IT and Forensics Association of uh, Kenya. Let's move away from that. Member of uh, the Inspector General of Police, I beg your pardon, David Asante Pietu, has disclosed the service arrested some of its own for the misapplication of road traffic regulations on sirens. He made this known when he appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament. 
But in recent times, we've arrested some of our officers who have been tried summarily. And even uh, on air, the Public Affairs Department, the director made mention of corporates such as police officers and other security agencies. Um, if you look at the law, we have the president, um, the ambulance, the police service, the military, and other national security vehicles and other vehicles that have been authorized by the authority, the DVLA, to install those uh, appliances. Other vehicles may use lights, but not the police lights that are blue and red. Uh, the Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, says it will prosecute over 500 landlords for defaulting in paying rent tax. Uh, Commissioner General of the GRA, Kofinti, made this known when he appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament Thursday. If the infringements uh, say that legally and constitutionally the person has to spend time in jail, we may not uh, object to those options. We may exercise some options to sanitize the system. If we are living in a country where impunity appears to uh, ride the storm, and we going forward, we want to be able to stem the tide and let everybody know that in as much as we benefit from the state, we have to play our responsibility to let the state function. But it has to do with the, the Ghanaian attitude generally. And that attitude doesn't help any of us. We want to make sure going forward, uh, we bring sanity into the system. Where as a people, we do the right things. So we want to do it in such a way that the society will know because when we are going to penalize, we penalize saying that everybody will say the person deserves the punishment that he is got. And still on the Public Accounts Committee, the committee has expressed frustrations at the recurring nature of infractions and violations of rules governing financial practices by ministries, departments and agencies. Chairman of the committee, James Kluche Aveji, who advised directors to tighten their control mechanisms, also reminded them that the Auditor General will not hesitate to surcharge them. Here are excerpts from the Public Accounts Committee sitting today. Uh, they must check with the consistently over the last 10 years they have fallen under the radar for the same infractions either unsupported documents unsubstantiated payments misapplication of capitation grant fictitious payments and so on and so forth for the last 10 years your officers don't know the the financial administration it looks like if nobody gets punished for this infraction so year on year on it gets uh, maybe the, the worst punishment is a transfer so you have to do something about it you went there yesterday to procure this document if you have done that earlier you don't even need to appear before this committee sir i'm sorry for that inconvenience we will be very fair with you but i think you are a candidate for any surcharge now Auditor General can search at you for any infraction. And even though you have the uh, uh, option to go and challenge that in court, uh, you have been made to pay the money, then you go and challenge it in court. So, so you must know that if you think that the usual way of Auditor General making recommendation to the public accounts and the public accounts committee will invite you, then you rush, go and get a letter that you have been cleared, that will no more hold. You'll be sanctioned, you'll be surcharged, and you pay the money with interest. You pay the money with interest. 
and Member of Parliament for the Sanarugu constituency, Al Haj ABA Fuseni, has taken a swipe at NDC member and citizen vigilante Martin Amido, uh, describing his utterances as perpetuating an MPP agenda for a position. Speaking on hot issues, the former editor of the Daily Graphic says the NDC must find a way to clip Martin Amido. And, and I can say that if you see what Martin Amido is doing now, He's more, he's more disposed, predisposed to the MPP than even the NDC, which he claims is his party. You he's, don't think he's, he's still an running, NDC member? He's consciously running the NDC down. How do you prove that? These are trances. How do you tie a whole party with a brush of corruption? He comes and says the NDC is corrupt. Is he not right in the things he says? He's very wrong. In fact, not only wrong, I would say he's mischievous. Because you cannot say a, a whole political party is corrupt. Who and who in the NDC have you substantiated allegations of corruption? You said the NDC super, superintended over corruption. So said, let him name those who are corrupt. And, and, and he said he calls himself a citizen vigilante. Was your party let able to fight corruption? Let him name those people and go ahead and use his citizen vigilante status and go to court. If you, if you are, if, if, he, if he's a, a man worth his When sons, you had an attorney general who could have done court. that. So that the evidence But he's gone to court with Whatever. He's gone to court with Sokoton. He's gone to court with Boyum. He has shown I'm saying that, that he can do that. Those members of the NDC, he's not gone with members of the NDC that he claims are corrupt. He should do that. He and, took William to court. And stop the mischievous things that he's doing, trying to run down the party. His agenda is to run down the NDC in the hope that he will propel his N N MPP, his newfound love for the MPP, so that they will find some position for him. Now, they say the case in town is to talk very nice about the MPP so that they can find some post for you. That's he's, what is happening. He's become a liability to the NDC. It's not an asset to the NDC. That one I can see for now. Right, make a date on Saturday for the full version of uh, Hot Issues on Saturday. That's how we draw the curtains for News at 10. I'm Stephen Enti. On behalf of the crew, good night. And thank you for leaving your dial at 3 News, uh, 3 FM 92.7. Good night.